What's up, everybody? I'm back. Uh, so the other day, I kind of got challenged. Not challenged like that, but challenged by a friend. Someone, you know what I'm saying, you know, I have a lot of respect for. It. And, you know, uh, the people that know me, you know, know that, 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 that I've been trying to work on, I've been working on trying to get my life story out. And, uh, so during, uh, my last incarceration, I had a lot of time on my hands. So while I was there, you know, I was, I was writing and, you know what I mean? You know, I think I got like maybe 200 pages front and back handwritten stuff. I'm not, I'm not even sure how many pages it is, but I know I have them set, you know what I mean? You know, and I have them set up by like chapters and, uh. I read one to my boy, and he was like, man, you got to put that on your channel. You got to put that on your channel. And I was like, oh, I'm trying to do the book, and I'm trying to do this. Yeah, man, just put it out there just, just to see see, see the reactions, see, see what people think, you know. Because he told me his opinion of it, and, 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 and he favored it, you know. So now I'm sitting there like, man, I don't know, you know what I mean, you know. But this is, this is, this is, this is it. And, and for most people that don't know, you know what I mean, you know, this, I brought this home with me. This was one of the envelopes you buy in the canteen. I've had it for some years, as you can tell. It's been around a little while. But this is all handwritten, you know what I mean, you know. And I got, you know what I'm saying, you know, pages and pages and pages and pages. And it goes on, but... I'm just, I'm just going to do one, and, uh, the name, the name of the, uh, the name of the chapter is Release, and, uh, this, let me, let me set the stage, so, this is me getting released from Soledad after doing 12 years, 7 months straight, you know, I started out level 4, and, you know what I mean? fought my way through that and then you know what I'm saying you know went down to level three with level four points after the second time I got stabbed on the same yard and you know what I'm saying you know the police they knew leave me here you know what I mean but they was like look we see you paroled from a level three if we sent you to a level three could you program I'm like yeah you know what I mean well, we're gonna send you to Donovan and I'm going home. So Donovan is a San Diego prison. If anybody knows anything about prisons back in the day. Now, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about now. I don't know about the 50-50 yards and the S&Y yards and, and all the, the, the things that the uh, administration does. And, and most of that is done to keep us fighting each other so that we can't fight against them. It's too many. It's too many inmates. I understand, you know what I mean, you know, at the time I didn't, I was a part of it, I was with it and let's go, you know what I mean, you know, and now when you think about it, you know what I mean, you know, they, 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 they were just like hurting us, you know, they keep us, you know what I'm saying, you know, busy on, 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 on fighting each other, we're not going to have time to get together and, 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 and fight them that's what they don't want so you know what I mean you know if you understand why things are done and you know what I mean you know okay I still don't make it right you know a lot of shit that goes on up in there is foul it's real foul but they don't tell you none of that you know they put a show on you know just to just for you to see and, and you think this is really what it is, but it's not, it's not, it's not what you see in Hollywood, it's not, you know what I mean, you know, it's a soap opera, it's a straight soap opera, you know what I mean, you know, you got COs up in there, you know what I'm saying, male and female, so you got, you know what I mean, and then you got all the men, you know what I'm saying, you know, trying to get at the female COs, but they ain't the only ones, it's the other COs getting at them. You know what I mean? You know, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen a lot. I've done a lot of time, but not all cops are bad cops. You know what I mean? 
some Walmart that's there to get a check, just trying to do their time and go home, trying to provide for their family. I ain't mad at that. That's being a man. That's standing tall. I ain't mad at that. It's the motherfuckers that, you know what I mean? You know, you know the ones, the one that's got their lunch money took when they was kids and, and you know what I mean, got picked on. And now, you know what I'm saying, you know, they in a position of power over, you know what I'm saying, inmates. So they want to, you know what I'm saying, you know, push they, you know what I'm saying, you know, they they they, they, they wait around. And, they, and it gets bad sometimes, you know, because everybody ain't built the same. Some people don't accept things the way other people do, and you know what I mean? I don't know, you know what I mean? You know, I'm screwed up. I am I got issues. But that's the thing, you know, I'm working on it. And as long as you keep working on it, it'll get better. I can only speak from examples. This is what I've been doing. I go to work. I go home. Man, I'm living. This is living. But I'm all legit. I'm a hustler, but I'm all legit. So when I hustle, now I got an acronym for hustle. How you survive through life every day. So I've already been told it's not a real acronym because you is spelled Y O U, not you. Okay, it doesn't matter. This is for me, not for nobody else. But hustle, how you survive through life every day. I go to work. I go to work and, and I bust my ass. And then people pay me. And they pay me enough so that I can provide for my family. Now, I don't have everything I want yet, but I'm working on it. And as long as I keep working on that, as long as I keep working on self, as long as I keep pushing forward, the sky's the limit. Man, I'm at the bottom floor of my life. It's no nowhere but up from here because I've been below this. I've been on the bottom. But you don't have to stay there. You want to get up? How at your boy. Man, look, you know what I mean? If you're serious and you want to do something, it's ways. It's people out here that somebody helped them. They want to help somebody else. But motherfuckers ain't giving out handouts. Motherfuckers give hand ups. Not handouts. So if you're serious about getting getting your shit right, holla at me. I got, you know what I'm saying, I got people, I got friends, I got connections. If I can help you, you know what I'm saying, get into a better position, then I'm in a better position. You know what I mean? We all, we all got to work together in order to make this thing work. So now, off track again. Uh, who did that? <laughs> Don't tell nobody. All right. So now, so this is 1990, what? This is 1995. 1995, yeah, I'm in Lancaster. Oh, no, 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 this is me paroling, so that was 06. Yeah, this is 2006. And October. Yeah. October 2006. I was in Soledad. I was in the hole. Mm. So, we'll go from there. So, now, I'm about to start reading, so this is just the one chapter, you know, if you got a comment, let me know what you think in the end. And then uh, I'll see what we go. See what we do with this from there. Uh, <clears throat> release. Years have passed and the day is here. I'm getting released today. I can't wait for the cops to let me out. And at the same time, I'm scared to go. I know how to live in here. I don't know how to live out there. What am I going to do? Finally, they take me to R&R, &R, receiving and release. I get, I get to R&R &R only to be put in a holding tank. They have been holding me for 12 years and 7 months. It's time to let me go. Time crawls by like the roach outside my tank door. It seems like forever, but then my name is called. I holler, over here! 
The officer lets me out and walks me to the counter and asks, why were you in the hole? It's the same story, and I tell it again. I'm a white crip, and the other whites drop kites on me. So the police put me in the hole because I was about to get out. They decided to keep me in the hole. Then he asked, are you going to be okay in a tank with everyone else? I said, yes, sir. I don't have a problem with nobody. So they give me my dress outs, clothes I'm going to wear home. I didn't have anyone send me anything. I didn't have anyone to send me anything. I had an old pair of Levi's, some 501s, a white sweatshirt, and some white Nikes. I kept the state drawers and the state socks. Nothing mattered except that I was getting out. There were four of us in the tank, and everyone was in a good mood. Getting released is a really good feeling, especially after as much time as I've done. Fear has left my mind because of the joy of finally getting out has taken over. I've waited so long for this day. Now it's here. Two of the guys in the tank are talking about their family picking them up. One of them is telling the story about how he's going to get high on the way out the gate. They'll be leaving before us because their family's picking them up. We'll be taken to the bus station. But for now, we are going to be waiting. That's CDC. Hurry up and wait. One of the guys is talking about his family and getting high. He'll be back. I've seen it so many times. I don't want to come back. I've just wasted 12 years and 7 months. With the last 8 months in the hole, I'd rather die than live like this again. This ain't living. I've just been surviving. And I don't know how I survived all these years. I've been through hell over the last 12 and a half years. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I don't know what I am going to do, but I know I ain't going to let them bring me back to another cage. I'll die first. Soon the police come and take me and take the two guys whose family came to pick them up. So hopefully it won't be much longer now. Time passes a little faster now that I have someone to talk to. Then our time comes. The police asks us our names, CDC numbers, and make sure the pictures they have of us are us. It's time to go and we walk to the van and the cop explains how things are going to work. He's going to give us a ride to the bus station. Get the bus tickets out of our $200 gate money, then give us the check and money when we get on when we get on the bus. In the van now, and we stop two more times to check our names and numbers again. Then we leave out the gate. And if you've never been incarcerated, you'll never know the feeling of rolling out of those gates past the fences, past the electrified fence, past the gun towers. I'm mesmerized by watching the prison getting smaller and smaller. All I can see is the towers. Then I can't even see them anymore. But the yard lights are so big, it seems like we'll never get far enough away to not see them. I look around, that's when I notice all the people. We are rolling on the freeway. And there are so many cars. Cars I've never seen before. So many big trucks and sports utility vehicles. The cars are shaped so funny. So we're getting on the freeway. And I look back and realize the yard lights are gone. 
We turn a few corners and pull into a parking lot. An officer opens the side door. He tells us he's going to give us $10 and purchase our bus tickets. When we get on, on the bus, he will give us the rest of our money. And until then, we are still in his custody. So don't do nothing stupid. I haven't smoked in eight months. I told myself I was going to quit. I go into the little store with my $10. I buy a pack of camels, a blue lighter, and a Pepsi. I go outside and light up a hump. The second hit, I get a head rush. I just lean against the wall and take a drink of the soda. I'm out. This feeling is strange. I lean against the wall of the Greyhound building looking around. I don't even know where I am. Gilroy, California. I've never heard of Gilroy before. It looks like the type of town you see on TV, small town America. The bus station is a small building in the center of town. I feel so good that this is not only my feel, not my feeling only. I look over and the guy paroling with me is feeling the same way. He is looking around and I see his smile and I know why he's smiling. Just being out of those walls is a feeling in life, unlike any other. The officer comes over to where we are smoking and asks, so are you boys gonna stay out? The other guy answers before me, I ain't coming back. I just keep quiet, but the wheels start turning. In my head, what am I gonna do? I don't know where I'm gonna stay or what I'm gonna do. But I'm out, and I'll make it somehow, some way. My life depends on it. So that's it. But that's just one chapter. We've got a couple more. So <clears throat> let me know what you think on that. You know, it's the Fourth of July weekend. Have some family over, have some good times, play some games, have some food. Feeling good this morning. Got a few things I want to do. You know, spend the time with the fam. Living, living. This is the best life. So, on that, I need y'all to get back at me. Give me some feedback and what you think on this, uh, on the book, on, on, the, on the chapter. And just release. So, uh, y'all get back at me. See you next time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Share with somebody. Thank you.